I've got another story about Jeremy James today and I thought Clark might like this one because this one is called Jeremy James Goes Shopping. I'm going shopping, said Mummy. Do you want to come with me? Will you buy me something nice? said Jeremy James. You can't expect me to buy you something nice every time I go shopping, said Mummy. I don't go shopping just to buy you something nice. But in any case, it's the end of the month, so I can't afford it. Are you going to buy cornflakes? asked Jeremy James. Yes, said Mummy. Well, I'd sooner go without my cornflakes and have something nice instead, said Jeremy James. <sighs> said Mummy. Get your coat on. I'm quite warm though, Mummy. Get your coat on. That, thought Jeremy James, is typical. Just because she's cold, I have to put my coat on. Jeremy James and Mummy went to the shops. They walked. Jeremy James would much rather have gone by bus, but Mummy said that they would come back by bus when they had the shopping to carry. It was healthier to walk. It was also cheaper to walk. So Jeremy James pretended he was a bus and stared in and out of the people until he almost stared straight into an old lady and then Mummy told him to walk properly. So he became the guard's man instead. The trouble with Mummy when she went shopping was that she liked all the wrong shops. Boring clothes shops and china shops and food shops especially. She only bought things in the food shops, but she spent hours in the clothes shops touching things and hours outside the china shops gazing in as if it were a zoo. Even in the food shops, she spent hours touching and gazing. She touched every packet of cheese, opened every box of eggs, weighed every piece of meat. The only thing she didn't spend hours on were tins of fruit. And tins of fruit were the thing that Jeremy James did like looking at. Apart from boxes of sweets and bars of chocolate and packets of cake. And Mummy didn't spend any time on them either. Mummy really didn't seem to have much idea about shopping at all. Next to the food supermarket was a toy shop. It was a new toy shop and its windows were full of games and soldiers and tanks and guns and footballs and bows and arrows and a few silly things for girls. Jeremy James noted all of this as I walked past the toy shop and he pointed it out to Mummy. He said, oh look Mummy, look at the games and the soldiers and tanks and guns and footballers and arrows and bows and those silly things for girls. And Mum said, Ugh and wouldn't stop because she would be late for dinner or something. Jeremy James followed her with his feet, leaving his eyes behind and bumping into a fat woman with a fur coat and a poodle. The fat woman with the fur coat and the poodle said something about like, <sighs> but was rather more <sighs> than <sighs> and Jeremy James said, ouch, and ran after mummy while the fat woman looked angry and moved her lips as if she was talking. There's the lady with the poodle, there's her poodle. And there's Jeremy James and there's Mummy rushing on ahead to the shops. Mummy started picking up chickens. They were frozen chickens in paper wrappings and they all looked alike. But Mummy studied them very carefully, one after another. Jeremy James fixed his eye on one particular chicken. Mummy had just put it down. And there was no doubt whatsoever that she picked up the same chicken a minute later. You've seen that one already, said Jeremy James. I know, because I've been watching it. Mummy didn't seem to hear. Mummy, won't we be late for dinner or something, said Jeremy James. But examining chickens seemed to really make Mummy very hard of hearing. Jeremy James wandered off to the tinned fruit department. He looked up at the colourful walls of mouth-watering pictures. Pineapples, pears, peaches, cherries, raspberries, strawberries and mandarin oranges. Sweet mandarin oranges all on their own juice, which was deliciously cold after you'd put the tin in the fridge for a while. 
The only trouble with tinned fruit was that you always wanted a second helping and mummy always said no because there was nothing left. They should make the tins a bit bigger so that you can have a second helping. When he was a grown up of course, Jeremy James would buy two tins just to make sure. But he'd suggested that to mummy and she had said something about tinned fruit not growing on trees and that apparently meant no. In front of the wall of juicy pictures were big wire thingamabobs, all full of tins, just like the tins up against the wall. People took the tins from the thingamabobs and put them in their trolleys, leaving the others standing up intact. Have you ever seen that in the, in the supermarkets where the tins are maybe all piled in very neat piles in a big pyramid against the wall? Mm. This seemed odd to Jeremy James because although the tins were all the same, the tins up against the wall looked nicer. They were sort of regular and more juicy looking. Grown-ups probably don't notice these things because when they're taking tins of fruit they're in a hurry and they simply go for the nearest one, which is always in the wire thingamabob. The same with cakes and bars of chocolate. They just take whatever's nearest because they're not interested in interesting things. They only pick and choose when it's boring things like meat or cheese or chickens. The more Jeremy studied the wall of tins, the more obvious it became that these were the best tins. That was why the people who owned the shop put them further away. They were probably saving them for themselves when the shop was closed. After all, when mummy bought fresh pears, peaches, oranges, apples and so on, some were nicer than others. And she always insisted that they should eat the nasty ones first. That must be the way grown-ups did things. Nasties first. It was the same with dinner and dessert. She never let them have dessert until they'd finished dinner. And he had to have his bath before he had his bedtime story. And he had to tidy his room before he got his piece of chocolate. Nasties first, that was the rule. And so the best tins of fruit were those against the wall and the best tin of all must be the most difficult to get at. The last tin that anybody could reach. It must be that tin there. He was in front of the Mandarin Orange Department. The tin in the middle of the bottom row. Jeremy James imagined saying to Mummy, Mummy, this is the best tin of mandarin oranges in the whole shop. And Mummy would say he was a clever boy and she might buy him an ice cream, even though it was the end of the month. In fact, she might make it his regular job, choosing the best tin of fruit every time they went shopping. Oh, Jeremy James smiled to himself. Life is simple when you use your brain. Jeremy James looked round quickly to make sure the shop people weren't looking because you could be quite certain that they would try to stop him taking the best tin of mandarin oranges in the whole shop. No one was looking. Jeremy James eased past the wire thingamabob. Jeremy James bent down. Jeremy James put his hand around the best tin of mandarin oranges in the whole shop. Jeremy James pulled. The best tin of mandarin oranges didn't move. Well, of course it didn't move. There were two more tins resting on top of it, holding it down. And so, with his left hand, Jeremy James pushed the two holding down tins. And with his right hand, he pulled the best tin of mandarin oranges. And then, a strange and terrible thing happened. The wall of tins seemed to do a kind of knee bend and then the tins started falling down. First of all, they fell all around the tin, which wasn't there anymore. And then they fell all over the place. Some of them fell on Jeremy James, but he quickly jumped out of the way and stood behind the wire thingamabob watching. Tins were bouncing and rolling everywhere and it wasn't just mandarin oranges. Peaches, pears and pineapples joined in as well. And the people in the shop all stopped moving around and turned to look in the direction of the tins of falling fruit and two or three people came hurrying along with pale faces and frowning eyebrows and an old lady pointed to her foot limping away and muttering and a baby cried and more tins fell and rolled 
and a very big shop man in a grey suit started giving orders and making other people in the shop run round and there were veins standing out in his forehead and his eyes were bulgy and he didn't look like a very nice man. And his bulgy eyes set on Jeremy James. And Jeremy James decided he'd better go and look for Mummy. He was rather glad when he turned round that Mummy was already there. There's Jeremy James. There's the wall of tins. And there is the best tin of mandarin oranges that he's trying to pull out. And you can see that once he pulled that away, all of the tins started to fall down. Come on, Jeremy James, said Mummy. We'll be late for dinner. Or something. Mummy took the best tin of mandarin oranges in the whole shop out of Jeremy's hand and slipped it into her trolley and pulled Jeremy James along rather roughly, he thought, to the cash desk. As they left the shop, Jeremy James looked back. The shop people were still picking up tins and the man in the grey suit still didn't look very nice. But Jeremy James knew why the man in the grey suit was angry. He had wanted that tin of mandarin oranges for himself. That's why. So what did you think of that story? I think I like the Jeremy James stories just as much as the naughty little sister stories. What about you? See you next time.